In this video, I will review Mastering Your Mean Girl by Melissa Ambrosini. This book says it is the no BS guide to silencing your inner critic and becoming wildly wealthy, fabulously healthy and bursting with love. Keep watching to find out more. Hi, I'm Linda and welcome to my YouTube channel, Better You Books, where I read and review books that help you to become a better version of yourself. In today's review of Mastering Your Mean Girl by Melissa Ambrosini, I will tell you more about the author, the format of the book, my thoughts and key takeaways, as well as my favourite quote, before letting you know who I would recommend it for and giving it a rating out of five. So keep watching till the end to see what score I gave it. This book was released in 2016 and Melissa has another book released since then called Open Wide, which is about relationships. I first heard about this book in a Facebook group. I had posted how much I'd enjoyed Girl Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis, which I've previously reviewed, and someone commented that if I liked that book, then I would also like Mastering Your Mean Girl. So I bought it in January of last year, and it's been sat on my shelves ever since, until it was chosen as our first book club pick for a new book club I've just started. If you want some more information on the book club, then look in the description below. Melissa is from Australia and she lives there with her husband and stepson. She's a holistic health and life coach and she's been called a self-help guru by Elle magazine. Her podcast, The Melissa Ambrosini Show, has had over 12 million downloads and she also has a TEDx talk about how your inner critic is holding you back. These days, Melissa is extremely healthy in terms of what she eats, the exercise she does, and also her mental health. But this wasn't always the case. In the past, she used drugs and alcohol as coping mechanisms. And she also didn't eat very well and didn't get enough sleep. And all of this took a real toll on her body. And she ended up in hospital, struggling with depression and eating disorder, thyroid issues. And she also had cold sores all over her face. Reaching rock bottom was a wake-up call for Melissa and ever since then she's completely transformed her life. This book is divided into three parts. Make love your internal GPS, living from love and bursting with love. The chapters have incredibly cheesy names like dial up your worthyometer and let passion pump your pulse and she covers topics such as self-love, health, money and relationships. Here are my three key takeaways from reading this book. Number one, choose love over fear. This is a central tenet of the book and it also came up recently when I was reading Heal, which I will review in the future. In the book, Melissa writes, in every moment you have one of two choices. You can choose either love or fear, your truth or your mean girl. Once you master the art of choosing love over fear, it will place your dream life at your fingertips. In the book, there was a quiz where there were two columns, one which represented love and one represented fear, and you had to tick which one applied to you. And unfortunately, my score for fear was higher than my score for love. So this is definitely something I need to work on. Number two, everything is an opportunity for growth. Melissa writes, I believe everything we are dealt in life is an opportunity for growth even the deep, dark, painful stuff. There are lessons, messages, and nuggets of wisdom in every experience. Our job is to open our awareness, find the nugget, and embrace the learning. Because if we don't, the same lesson will come back around in two weeks, two years, maybe even two decades, until we manage to get the message. Finally, number three, feeling down? Have a pity party dance off. Melissa says that when she used to feel sad or angry or frustrated, she used to suppress these emotions, which is what I used to do too. But now she's come up with this new technique called the pity party dance off. I haven't tried it yet, but I think it sounds pretty good. So next time I'm feeling this way, then I'm going to check it out. So if you want to know how to do it too, basically, whenever you feel these emotions, you should immediately go and take yourself somewhere quiet. If it's at work, I know it might be a bit difficult, but say you could go to the toilets for a little while. Then when you go in there, set your timer on your phone for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how severe the emotions are. And then during those 10 to 15 minutes, really feel those emotions 
and express them however you have to. So that might be crying, it might be punching the air, it might be screaming into a pillow, it might just be breathing deeply. Fully express those emotions for the duration of the timer. And then when the time is up, place your hand over your heart and say to yourself, I love you and you are safe. You can now let this go and move on. Repeat that a few times. And then this is where the fun comes in. Then put on your favorite pump up tune and dance around crazy to it. And if you're not in the toilets at work or you have to be quiet, then also sing as loud as you can. I love quotes and this is my favorite one from the book. You get what you feel you deserve. I like this as I can struggle with self-worth so it resonated with me. Melissa also does a reframe from saying I'm lucky to saying I'm worthy, which I thought was interesting. I was drawn to this book because I like the title. You might find it a bit cheesy, but I like the idea of calling that annoying voice inside my head, my mean girl. The format of the book was really good for me as well. There were lots of exercises scattered throughout. There were some inspirational quotes and at the end of each chapter, there was a summary. There were, however, a few contracts to sign to make promises to yourself, which I really didn't like, but they might work for some people. Sometimes it felt that Melissa was going a bit off topic when she was talking about things like health and money and so on. But I guess a lot of things can go back to your inner critic. Melissa's very spiritual, so in the book she talks a lot about meditation, manifestation, affirmations, gratitude and so on. It was hard to relate to Melissa in this book as her life just seems way too perfect. If you look at her Instagram, you'll see what I mean. It's just full of really curated pictures that just scream, I have the perfect life, which is just pretty annoying. Her life also feels quite unattainable. For example, Melissa loves gratitude as do I, but she doesn't just have a daily gratitude practice. She does five different types of gratitude every single day. She also came across a bit preachy at some points in the book. And she did say that you didn't have to do things the same way as her, but she made it clear that her way was the best way. I really didn't like the chapter on health because she says that she's all about intuitive eating, but then she listed what felt like a lot of rules to follow. The exercises were where I got the most value from this book. They were not necessarily innovative, but they were things I hadn't done before and they had a profound impact on me. I'll share one of the exercises with you now, but if you want to know about some of the others that I found useful, then drop me a comment below and we can discuss them. So one of the ones I really enjoyed was about your soul sisters. Again, another cheesy name, but it's basically your 10 closest friends. And you had to write down why they were so important to you, and then send them a message afterwards. So I did this and I sent them all a message telling them why I loved them and why they were so important to me. Cry my eyes out to tour in the process naturally. And it just felt so good. And a lot of them came back saying how much they appreciated it as well and how it made them cry too. And it was just such a lovely process that I think perhaps being British, then Telling people how we feel about them is maybe something we don't do enough. So this was really nice. And then I got up to make a cup of tea and I saw there was a card um, at the letterbox. So I opened it and it was from the CEO of the company that I've recently been made redundant from. And it was a really touching personal card. And it just felt so apt that I just sent out all of these loving thoughts um, into the universe and then I got some of them back to myself. I didn't hate this book. I just didn't love it either. It wasn't that memorable and Melissa just isn't that relatable really as she just seems way too perfect. So I'm giving this book three and a half stars. The book is probably worth three stars but I got so much out of some of the exercises that that has bumped the score up a little bit. This book is definitely aimed at women I would recommend it to those who are already fans of Melissa and also people who want an introduction to how to manage your inner critic. What do you think? Does this book sound like something you might be interested in reading for yourself? If so, then please drop me a comment below. I've added more information on Melissa and the book in the description. If you prefer listening to books rather than reading them, Melissa narrates the book herself for Audible. If you like the concept of this book, but don't want to read an entire book on it, then I would recommend Melissa's TEDx talk. 
In fact, it's worth a watch, even if you have read the book. In my next video, I will be reviewing Designing Your Life by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. This is a step-by-step -step guide to how to design your perfect career. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please click subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're the first to know about my future videos. Also, if you haven't already, then give me a follow on Instagram. I'm at Better you Books and I post book inspiration and motivational quotes. Have a fantastic week and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.